My name is Mark Sign. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, uh, December the 4th. Uh, we will sing a few songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper. And I have a message for you that hopefully will be enlightening and uplifting. Uh, here at our church, we sing from a song book called Songs of Faith and Praise. If you have that book, you can turn to the number. Uh, if not, I'll give you the name of the title. So you can either Google it or use the book that you have so that you can sing along with us. The first song that we will sing is entitled, I Will Call Upon the Lord. In our book, it is number 63. I Will Call Upon the Lord. <clears throat> I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let God of my salvation be exalted. I know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I know the Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Number 726. 7.26. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Number 7, 26. We'll sing it through twice. <clears throat> Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Uh, to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, let's sing number 315, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <coughs> When I survey the wondrous cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and bore contempt on all my pride. Forbidden Lord that I should boast, Save 
in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. From his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love for mingled down. Did there such love and sorrow meet? Thorns compose so rich a crown. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. When we do survey the wondrous cross on which our Prince of Glory died, uh, what are we looking for? Uh, the song says that uh, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt come on all my pride. It's a time when we become very, very humble. We try to put all of our pride behind us and we look at Jesus crucified. Um, we see from his head and from his hands and from his feet the blood that flow mingled down. We see his body wrapped in pain. And we know that that was the one and perfect sacrifice uh, that Jesus made for each one of us. We're so grateful for the plan that God had. We're so grateful that Jesus was willing to live the right, leave the right hand of God, come down to earth as a human, uh, suffer all things that humans uh, would suffer and indeed at last suffer the death of agony on the cross. And so as we look at the emblems that are placed before us, the bread and the fruit of the vine, we know there is a symbolism here. The symbolism is the, the body of our Lord and the blood of our Lord. Let's pray as we partake of the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that in your divine love and your divine insight, that uh, you sent Jesus to us. You sent Jesus into a sinful world that he might save those that are lost. We know that through his teachings that many are able to gain salvation and live with you eternally. And as we partake of this bread, help us to think of the body that uh, was given in our stead. We pray this in his most humble name, amen. think about the blood of Jesus, the song rings true. It says that uh, when the blood flowed down, it says, did e'er such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so rich a crown? We know that it was necessary for Jesus to shed his innocent blood. And we know the, the symbolism of that the symbolism is that uh, the blood of Jesus washes away our sins. It gives us the forgiveness that we need to have. It teaches us about forgiveness. It teaches us that through the blood of Jesus, we can be forgiven and we need to forgive others. Let's pray for the fruit of the body. 
we just come before you in humility, dear Heavenly Father, knowing that Jesus shed his innocent blood that we might live. Help us as we contemplate this. Help us as we think of uh, that blood flowing down, that blood that oozed from his body and caused him to die, that is life-giving to us. Bless us, we, bless us as we partake. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, there is something else that uh, we also do on the Lord's Day, and that is that we give back that which we have been prospered. Uh, we have the wonderful story of the widow who gave her two mites. We have wonderful stories over and over again of people giving, especially the first century church where uh, people sold what they had, gave to one another, gave to the poor. And we pray that uh, we might be as those uh, in the first century were, willing to give back. We know we live in a much more complex society, but the mission of the church is still the same. It's to go and seek the lost. It is to help those who are helpless and are in need. Uh, bless us as we give. Let's pray. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to give with a cheerful heart this we know that you said that the Lord indeed loves a cheerful giver. Help us to live, give with gratitude. Help us that we lay by in store that with which we have been blessed because we know that all good things come from you. Be with us in our giving. Help those that are in charge of the monies uh, that they will use it to bring others to the Lord that it will be used to help those who need help. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn your songbooks to number 777, <laughs> the title of this song is, Father, Hear the Prayer We Offer. Father, Hear the Prayer We Offer. 777. <clears throat> Father, hear the prayer we offer, nor for reads that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Not forever by still waters Would we idly quiet be But would smite the living fountains From the rocks along our way be our strength in hours of weakness. In our wanderings be our guide. Through endeavor, failure, danger. Father, be thou at our side. Let our path be bright or dreary, storm or sunshine be our share. May our souls in hope unweary make thy work our ceaseless prayer. I hope you were able to sing along with us. I know the Lord was praised. I know that I was uplifted during the singing. I hope that you were also. If you were uh, there this morning, you perhaps heard my kind of complicated uh, title to the lesson this evening. Uh, the title is Prayer, Petition, Supplication, Entreaty, and Intercession. In reality, the lesson is about 
intercession. But it's almost impossible to talk about intercession without talking about prayer, without talking about petition, without talking about supplication, without talking about entreaty. And so let's look at some of the English definitions of these words to get us in the right uh, frame of mind. Prayer is probably the easiest word to define. I think all would understand it to mean that this is when one speaks to God. Now understand, intercession is also speaking to God. Therefore, prayer could also include intercession. How about petition? It's defined dictionary-wise as an instrument of writing or printing containing a prayer from the person presenting it called the petitioner to the body or person to whom it is presented for the redress of some wrong or the grant of some favor which the latter has a right to give. Hence, uh, the term petition that people form when they try to enact something and they get signatures from people. Uh, you, you heard it said before, please sign this petition. So it is an instrument of writing. It is a, it is a petition. And then there's that term supplication. Supplication is the action of asking and perhaps even begging for something and doing it humbly and earnestly. It is thought of as something very often that someone asks for himself or for herself. And then we come to the last word. We've done prayer, petition, supplication. And that term is entreaty. Entreaty. Entreaty is an earnest and humble request. Again, the dictionary defines it this way. A petition, now notice how we use terms that we've already talked about, on behalf of one's neighbor. In other words, intercession conveys the idea of what one person does for another person by asking God on the other person's behalf. When we look at our bulletins at our church, our bulletins contain lists of people who we put on what we like to call our prayer list. Sometimes they have asked to be put on our prayer list. Sometimes they are put on our prayer list by someone who knows them and realizes that they need prayer. Now, again, the, the dictionary definition of intercession reads, here it is. Get this. This is dictionary. This isn't, um, this isn't Bible dictionary. This is Miriam Webster Thorndike dictionary. It says prayer, petition, or entreaty in favor of another. And so as we see in the English language, these words are often used and correctly so and used interchangeably. Okay, so where does that put us in this lesson? Prayer, petition, supplication, and entreaty. I told you that this lesson was indeed about intercession. Um, when are we supposed to make, or when are we supposed to have this intercession in our heart? Well, let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. And here's the command that's given here. <clears throat> this is 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. First of all then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men for kings and all who are in authority so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life 
in all godliness and dignity. Notice again how we use those other words when it talks about intercession. You know what? In our country, people complain and whine about their governing officials. What we ought to stop doing is stop whining and stop complaining and start praying for them as the Bible tells us that we are. Notice the purpose. It says that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Isn't that what we're trying to do? Aren't we trying to live a dignified and tranquil lives? Isn't that what we want from people in positions of authority? Haven't we elected them so that we will have tranquil and um, uh, more peaceful lives? And to add this, another caveat, that we may do this in a godly manner. Now, we are to intercede for those who ask for our intercession. I find it interesting when Philip went about to preach uh, the good news of salvation. Here's what it says in uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 12. They believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ and they were being baptized, men and women alike. Even Simon, who we call Simon the Sorcerer, who had deceived people with his magic, believed and was baptized. However, Simon reverted back to his old ways because he saw that these people, through the Holy Spirit, had special gifts. He was a magician. He tricked people into seeing things. He saw the real deal. And he said to Peter, give me this stuff. Now, Peter was very harsh with Simon. In Acts chapter 8, verses 20 to 22, Peter said, may your silver perish with you. You have no part or portion in this matter. For your heart is not right before God. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that, if possible, the intention of your heart may be forgiven. This touched the heart of Simon, as we see it in the next verse, in verse 24, where Simon says, Pray to the Lord for me yourselves, so that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Simon realized not only did he see the real thing in the deeds that people were able to do, the miracles that were able to perform, but if they had that ability, that he could literally be cursed for uh, his wanting to buy this power. When they prayed for him, they were interceding on his behalf. And any time anyone asks us to pray for them, they are asking us to intercede on their behalf. The same idea is found in the writings of James, in the epistle of James. The chapter is chapter 5, and the verse is verse 16. And it says, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. What's James talking about? He's talking about prayers of intercession for someone who is sick, praying to God on their behalf. We are interceding on their behalf. Now, let's up this a level. When one becomes a believing and child of God through, through uh, confession and repentance and baptism, 
Christ becomes their intercessor. The Hebrew writer explained this. In Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, it says, Therefore he, that's Christ, is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him. Now listen to this. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus is now at the right hand of God. When he left the earth, he said, All authority has been given to me, both in heaven and on earth. And part of what he means is that he's there at the right hand of God, interceding for those that believe in him. He intercedes in our behalf in all situations. Now, John explained this in 1 John verse one, uh, chapter 1 and verse 9. He says, if we confess our sins, ready? He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus does that from the right hand of God to forgive us. Now, Paul explains. Now, remember, Jesus intercedes for us. Paul says even more. He says in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27, in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. Here we go. But the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You know, sometimes we pray, and I don't know about you, but every once in a while I'm in prayer and I'm wondering, what, what, what do I pray for next? What's supposed to be in there? How and who do I pray for in a particular situation? And we may not be able to express what we want to express in the correct way. The Spirit then intercedes for us and helps us to pray in the right way. One last thing, and this lesson will be ours. Jesus is our intercessor and our mediator. Two passages tell us, Hebrews 7.25, Romans 8.34, that Jesus intercedes for us. But note what it says in 1 Timothy 2.5. And, and this is talking about Jesus. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to draw a line here. Mediator, intercessor. They do not mean exactly the same thing. An intercessor stands beside somebody and pleads for them on their behalf. A mediator stands between two parties in order to bring them back together again. Now, <clears throat> the important thing about Jesus as our mediator is because he came down here in the form of a human being. He is equally related to both parties. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man. So he is the one that can mediate. He can plead for our case because he understands both sides. It's not just intercession. It's mediating to bring us back. How more of a perfect mediator can Jesus Christ be? Because he's equally related to both parties, God and the sinner. 
Jesus is God and he's also a man. He gave his blood as we observed in the Lord's Supper as a payment to God so that we can be forgiven. And so as I complete this lesson this evening, intercession is a key biblical concept because it expresses succinctly what Jesus does for us and what we ought to do for each other. We can't pay for somebody else's sins. We can't pay for our own sins. But we can stand with a brother or a sister who has sinned and plead their case as a faithful intercessor. We can ask God to grant mercy upon them. We can plead for anyone who has a need that God can meet. That's what being an intercessor is all about. I hope this lesson was enlightening to you. I hope that it sheds some new light on what um, intercession is all about and how it is equally yoked with prayer and petition and supplication and entreaty. I want you to notice something that I said. And what I said was, when one is baptized into Christ, he or she becomes a child of God, and then Christ becomes his intercessor. Jesus can't be our intercessor unless we are one of his children. And so the invitation goes out uh, this evening. If you have not become a child of God, you need to, uh, for one important reason, we realize that it's our path to salvation, but it's so that Jesus can intercess for us through God, to, to, that the Holy Spirit can intercess. Because when we're baptized, it says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that will intercede for each one of us. And so if you need to come to Jesus tonight, if you need to confess and repent and be baptized, get in touch. We will be at your call immediately. I hope that this message was uh, uh, as enlightening to you as it was to me as I prepared it. Uh, let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful uh, for the wondrous love that you showed for us, that while we were yet sinners, you sent Jesus to us. And it's that richness that we find in our Lord. It's that richness as a mediator and as intercessor. Help us to learn our lessons from Jesus so that we can intercess for others and pray for others. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we live our lives Help us to live the godly lives that you call us to live. Christ-like lives. Christ-like because of some of the things that we've learned tonight about prayer, about petition, about supplication, about entreaty, and how they really relate to intercession. Bless us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to uh, be tender to your touch in all ways. Forgive us of our sins. Continue to be with us and bless us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.